the International Panel on Climate Change, has just issued its fifth report, and, and they're a fairly conservative group. And what, what, they're, what they're telling us, what they're telling us, is, here, here are some quotes. They say that they're, 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 you have to be ready for the coming breakdown of the human food system due to major precipitation extremes of drought and flood. Uh, between 2014 and 2100, there will be two billion new mouths to feed, and we're gonna have five times the number of extreme weather incidents. There's gonna be an increase in violence due to conflicts and civil war over the arable land that remains. We are all sitting ducks, said the author of the report, uh, Professor Michael Oppenheimer of Princeton. Is it, and they're anticipating a rise from seven to 10 degrees Fahrenheit between now and the, the year 2100. And, and the thing to remember is that this is being done with full knowledge. The federal government is passing laws under the whip hand of these financial interests that are actually affirmatively authorizing these people to pump this sludge into our environment. Millions of tons of carbon into the environment. Millions of tons of pollutants under the Clean Air Act, they call it. And what they're saying is, is that, that even though the International Panel on Climate Change five years ago called for a demand that there be a reduction in the annual output of global greenhouse gas emissions the, to reduce by 70% the annual global greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2020 below the amounts that were being emitted in 2001. And even though they called for a 70% reduction, the United States Congress has passed resolutions allowing only 7% reduction which means that they're allowing, by affirmative legislation, the major corporations to pump this, this stuff into the atmosphere, pawning off their costs onto the community, contaminating the atmosphere, contaminating the rivers and streams. And, uh, and so that, that there's millions of tons uh, being put out into the atmosphere. And we know that with the rising of the global mean temperature of the planet, by seven to 10 degrees by the year 2100, we know that it's me melting the major polar ice caps. We all know this, they're showing it on the television all the time, that the, the ice is melting and that we can see it melting. The, the, oh, the water coming out of the ice, the ice fields and in the, the ice caps going into the ocean, what it's doing is it's diluting the oceans. It's diluting the salt water. It's lowering the salt content of the water, therefore decreasing the density of the, of the, of the ocean. And what's, causing, what's happening is the underwater currents across the planet are starting to rise to the surface because of the decrease in density of the water. And they're starting to rise to the surface where they will dissipate. And that we will then lose the North Pacific Drift, the Gulf Stream, uh, the, the, they, they, in fact, they, they are stopping a process called thermon, thermal hyaline circulation on our planet. And when those underwater currents are dispersed, we are going to lose the temperate zone on our planet. That is what causes the temperate zone, that, that area between 24 degrees uh, north latitude and 66 degrees north latitude and south latitude, where 90% of all the food on the planet is grown in those regions, okay? And that that's, that's what's happening, and the temperature change of the ocean is killing off the plankton. And the plankton are the very root of the, of the food chain. That the larger fish that eat the plankton and the, the bigger fish eat the other fish. That that whole chain, the food chain, is being destroyed by the increasing temperature and the alteration in the salination levels of the sea. Uh, and, and not only, uh, th that is also, as you know, because of the heat, the increased heating, it excites the molecules of the ocean, of the water, and they start to expand. That's what causes the expansion of the ocean. And they are now anticipating from 24 inches to 39 inches of global mean sea rise across the planet by the year 2100. And what that means, what that means, now, now people say, oh, well, you know, 24 inches, you know, it's, uh, I go out and I can measure 24 inches up on the beach, it doesn't hurt anything. That is going to cause inundation up to 20 miles, 20 miles from the shorelines all across the world. 
And it turns out that over 53% of the American population lives within 40 miles of the shorelines in our country. And most of the industry, much of the industry is there. And, uh, and the, but very importantly, not only will the actual continuation of the present levels of global greenhouse gas emissions cause the rising in the global sea levels for 24 to 29, 39 inches, but what it will do, if it goes on up until the year 2100, it will lock in the later sea rise of 23 feet in the 22nd century. And this is absolute total catastrophe for the human family because just the inundation up to 20 miles is going to contaminate the aquifers up to 30 miles from the shorelines. And now what they're doing is engaging in fracking that they're coming into the main, the heartland of the country, in the, in the Dakotas, all through the Dakotas in the, in the Midwest and into Pennsylvania, and they're fracking. And what they're doing is they're driving poisons down into the ground, poison chemicals down into the ground inside of these concrete tubes. And they're, they're blowing out all the seams and, and pulling the oil and the, and the natural gas out of there. And what they're doing is they're leaving that poison inside those concrete columns and then walking away and capping them and walking away from those fields. How long do people think those concrete tubes are going to stay intact? That, that we've talked to experts, Sarah and I, were up in North Dakota talking with the people doing this. <coughs> they feel terrible, but they're still doing it. And the fact is they know that within 40 years, all of those concrete uh, tubes are going to disintegrate and pour all of those poison chemicals into the water table up there and destroy the Ogallala uh, aquifer, okay? That those are, those are the kind of things that are happening, and that we, we also know that of the 435 private nuclear power plants in the country, or in the world, 435 nuclear power plants, 400 of them are right on the seacoast because they're using the, the water from the ocean to cool the, the reactors, just like, just like at Fukushima. And so when you have 20 miles of inundation taking place between now and the, and the 2100, you've got 400 private nuclear reactors with full nuclear piles operating in that area. Okay? So that we're looking at potentially 400 Fukushimas uh, between now and the year 2100. Okay? So these, these are the... These are the, the and, and on top of that, For those of you who are not awake yet, uh, the, 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 there actually is causing the thawing of the permafrost areas of the planet along the Arctic and the Antarctic Circle. And in fact, there, are, there is 50 billion tons of methane gas is, is, is locked in under those permafrosts. And in fact, the, the methane, when released in the plumes, actually is 20 times more powerful as a global greenhouse gas than is carbon monoxide, okay? And so they we're, we're facing a massive increase in the, in the storms. I mean, CNN loves tracking these storms around like it's a game. Oh, look, there's a huge global coal mass coming down into Alabama. It's probably the best thing that's happened to Alabama in years. But, but, the, but the, 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 the fact of the matter is they've got huge storms happening. There are massive thunderstorms occurring. Tornadoes, 25 tornadoes in one night in Alabama. And they're, they're all covering it like, this is news. We haven't seen this before. Uh, and, and now, uh, this, this is the, uh, what, they're, what they're really looking at, according to the International Panel on Climate Change. What we're looking at is, as they list them, uh, major economic collapse, that as the crops fail, as the mass exits from the industrial zones along the coast, by the year 2050, 50% 50 of the entire human family will live within 40 miles of the seacoast. And that all of these people between 2050 and 2100 are going to have to be evacuated from these areas that are flooding out and contaminating their water tables. Okay? The agricultural uh, crops are going to be, be killed off. The amount of water available is going down. So all of these things begin to occur, and you say to yourself, let me see, what do we think it's going to be like when that is happening? 
And, and uh, what do we think that the major authorities are going to do about it? 